juxtaposition. The fact of two things being placed closely together to produce a contrasting effect. Aside from the confusing division happening in America that shrouds the boilerplate commentary of this film, juxtaposition is what really makes Civil War tick. It's in every facet of the film, from the characters to the story, and where things get dark, the tone. But we'll get into that craziness as I do my Saturday cleaning. I got a special guest coming. It's gonna be exciting. This story is made up of vignettes, which is often much more than the dark ring around your picture. A vignette can be an excellent way to tell a story. But I can hear you asking, what is that? It's pretty simple. A vignette is usually a brief account of something, like a short look into a character or a place or story that we briefly explore. Civil War is a road trip movie filled with vignettes. The characters attempt to get to Washington, D.C. to interview the president, but we are constantly hung up by that pesky war going on. Pesky pixie Acting more as a minor annoyance than anything else. Every 10 or so minutes, the film resets with a new thing happening. There's a bombing at a water truck, a sniper standoff, people guarding gas, evil soldiers butchering civilians, and so much more. Each one slowly ramps up in intensity, forcing our characters to act and react. When things get extreme, the reasons why things got extreme no longer become relevant. One of the most difficult things in the film is just seeing how America has folded in on itself due to this conflict. But the actual juxtaposition comes in with the reporters. Once you start asking yourself those questions, you can't stop. So we don't ask. We record so other people ask. We see them more than likely as ourselves. We've got the old grounded one, the one seeking a big break, the passionately crazy one, and the veteran tired of her life. They are a reflection of modern life and directly juxtapose what America has become. When normalcy fails, what will you become is the question it's asking with its story. If pushed to the edge, would you hang people by their hands for stealing? When bombs fall in your area, will you join a resistance to kill other Americans? You don't know what side they're fighting for. Someone's trying to kill us. We are trying to kill them. One of the most important scenes in the film is a short sequence between snipers. There's one in a building and the other laying on the ground looking for him. The sniper says there's someone trying to kill them. No sides, no flags, just people killing people. Yo, what's over there in that house? Someone shooting. Next, the characters. Civil War immediately puts two contrasting people right next to each other. Kristen Dunst plays an incredibly jaded wartime photographer. Nothing seems to phase her, nothing shocks her, and she hardly ever shows emotion. It's only when she gets paired with a young version of herself when we see why she's like this. There is no version of this that isn't a mistake. I know. Jesse is a bright-eyed young woman trying to follow the footsteps of Kristen Dunst's lead. So Jesse pushes her way into the press caravan moving toward DC. But seeing the path that Jesse has been put on because of her influence, Lee tries to push her away. At this point, all Jesse has seen are the world-class images Lee has created, not realizing the incredible lengths and real danger she is in to get them. Lee has been to hell and back. She's seen the worst of humanity, and it leads her to feel callous toward the tragedy all around her. Taking images of all the death and horror like it's a Tuesday at Starbucks. This isn't the life she wants for anyone and Jessie represents that very real connection to reality that she has lost. It's this juxtaposition that helps the audience realize how good we have it. We see tragedy through videos on Twitter or images on Instagram, but we frequently don't know the very real horror behind them. <laughs> As soon as we see that chicken get electrocuted, we can just turn our phones off and drink some Prime. Not sponsored. We can all say we support Ukraine in their fight against Russia, but we don't understand it. Like Jesse, we just know what it looks like, not how it is. While images can show us reality, they can often detach us from it, which is exactly what's happened to Lee, and even more metaphorically, the director Alex Garland. Boris Johnson. Sure. It was an interesting thing, he was manifestly a liar. It, yeah. was, it was completely obvious he was a liar. And journalists would point this out, but they didn't have any traction. Losing this connection to reality only serves to hurt us and, ultimately, the people around us. Unless we realize it before it's too late. I've never been scared like that before, and I've never felt more alive. Where things get really dark is with the film's tone. <laughs> Oh shit. With all the death, 
destruction, and violence, you'd naturally expect to see this movie presented in a specific way. Most war films or wartime films are similar in that way. Saving Private Ryan is a great example of this. Dirty, grungy, and shaky. So is Hacksaw Ridge, Kingdom of Heaven, All Quiet on the Western Front, and so many more. When showing an audience tragedy, it's appropriate to dirty the image up a little bit, to give us a sense of unease. Pair that with some downbeat music and you have a classic war movie. But Civil War doesn't do this. In fact, I'd say it does the exact opposite. The entire film is shot open mat, IMAX presentation, giving us a wide field of view to see everything that's happening, directly juxtaposing most 2.39 to 1 war movies that try to make you more claustrophobic. They try giving you the feeling of being that terrified soldier. Instead of that, we see everything here. Almost like Garland wanted this movie to look more like the images Lee and Jesse are taking. It's uncomfortable because the action is shown so thoroughly, never holding back from showing a disturbing image and even holding on it with a static, unmoving camera sometimes. But even more frightening is its use of music. If you saw someone being shot in the face after lying in a pool of their own blood, what song do you imagine would be playing over top of this? Something dramatic? No, certainly not. It's Say No Go by De La Soul. Of course. Duh. This isn't on, by the way. It's this tonal whiplash that serves as the perfect juxtaposing ideas. Something so dark put right up against something you'd probably hear in a high school coming of age story. It's these choices that keep you off balance. Your mind likely racing with questions. I thought this was supposed to be dark. Am I supposed to laugh? Who are these people and why is one better than the dying man? It's these tonal choices where Garland lays out the film's point. He, like the reporters, is merely showing you what's happening. He doesn't take sides because in this type of conflict, there there isn't sides to be taken, like the sniper standoff. It's just people killing people. Not good, not bad, just people. He shows us something horrific and immediately undercuts the horror with something bright and fun. Doing this forces us to think about it. Like the character Lee, so many of us are jaded to violence around us, either pretending it's not happening or just numb to it. You can go on Instagram right now and see a car crash within four seconds. So how are we supposed to be empathetic when that is normal? How are you supposed to care when it's everyday life? Only when that reality is shifted slightly does it wake us up. Now I'm not saying listen to Christmas music as you watch your Instagram car accidents, what I am saying is that there's probably a lot more under the surface of why we're so divided right now.